Hi, I'm Gene, and welcome to Assess Minutes, where we take a complex assessment topic and break it down to make it easily understandable, because minutes matter. Sometimes customers will call in and ask an essential question about STAR tests because we've added so many capabilities to them and we can report so many things uh, through a variety of interfaces. And essentially what their question boils down to is, how could a short test do so very much? Uh, in, in essence, what they're saying is there's almost a face validity issue. It, it almost de doesn't seem valid at face level that such a succinct test could actually provide so much. But there is a very, very realistic answer about how it can be done, and the answer succinctly is adaptive testing. So when we're comparing STAR to other tests, we must realize that it is uniquely arranged in its adaptive ability, and as a result, it allows it to do some things that sometimes just can't be achieved on other tests. This graphic, I think, is one of the most valuable ones we have to help you understand several really important ideas uh, about adaptive testing. So let's work through them just a little bit here. Uh, first of all, each green or red dot here represents a question either answered correctly or incorrectly by the student. So in this case, the student answers the first question correctly, and as a result of a correct answer there, they get a harder question. And they answer that one correctly, and on the third one, it's a bit harder, and they give an incorrect answer. And so when I ask some folks about adaptive testing, what they say is, well, I know that what it means is that essentially when a student gives a correct answer, they get a harder question, and when they give an incorrect answer, they get an easier question. And that is a really good way to think about it. But there's actually several other things going on that I would like to point out to you. First of all, notice the tails. Uh, that appear around any of these items. Uh, and notice that they're fairly lengthy as the test begins, but by the time we get to the end of the test, those tails have gotten much, much smaller. Uh, what that represents is the margin of error around the estimated score for students. So obviously as the test starts, you present a score, but the margin of error is going to be pretty large because you haven't sampled all that much. But as the test progresses, what we find is by the time we get to the end, there's a very small or a very succinct margin of error. Another major idea is reflected by the blue line that you see here, which is the reliability of the score. How much faith can you have in the overall score that is produced? And what you notice about this, and this is inherent not just to STAR, but to any computer adaptive test, is that reliability rises very drastically as the test starts taking uh, place. And then over time, the rate of rise begins to decline somewhat, and then there somewhat becomes a plateau. Now to be clear, it's never a plateau. It's always going up. Uh, it's just that it doesn't go up quite as much. Uh, so what you see in this depiction is the very reason that we cut star off at 34 questions because by the time you've answered 34 questions, you have achieved a very, very high degree of reliability. We could extend the test, we could have more questions, and they would increase reliability slightly but we believe that this is the sweet spot. This is the most reliable score achieved in the shortest amount of time. Now, a couple other things about uh, adaptive testing that could be useful. First of all, uh, if you ask a psychometrician about adaptive tests, uh, generally speaking, even the most conservative psychometricians will say every one question on an adaptive test has the same uh, information producing power of at least two questions on a non-adaptive test. Uh, and some will say maybe the power of up to three. So our 34 question adaptive test has the same power as giving somewhere between 68 to 102 items on paper. Now, how can that be and, and why is it so much more productive? If you think about this, what some folks will say is, when you are adapting the test, you are avoiding the floor or the ceiling effect. In other words, you don't ask a bunch of questions to a kid so that they don't know the answer to, and you don't ask a bunch of questions to them that they easily know the answer to. Uh, as one researcher put it, uh, the dynamics around a computer adaptive test is that it mimics what a wise examiner would do. What would someone do if we could pay someone to sit down and administer individual items to a kid? They would give a student an item, they would take a look at how they respond to it, and then based on that response, they would choose the next item. And if the answer to the first item was correct, you'd probably get a harder item. 
And when you get to those items that you don't get correct, you start getting easier items. Because the primary insight for us is this. When a student is answering a series of questions very easily, we're not learning much about them. And when they're answering a lot of questions incorrectly, we are also not learning much about them. It is in exploring this edge of performance where there's some right and some wrong that we learn the most about students. And that's what exactly computer adaptive testing does. It maximizes the information in the shortest possible amount of time.